going to let this run for a few minutes while I'm finishing up uh, this last piece, and then we'll put this together, see how it goes together. It's going to be um, a table base. There's a couple more components going on it, but I have to get it together so I can lay out the uh, cross and the long stretcher. But I'm um, just going to let it run while I work on it, talk a little bit. Talk a little bit about joinery. So what I'm cutting now is interlocking pieces that are going to lock. You'll see in a minute. But um, there's one thing on sawing. I'm just cutting out a relief right now. Sure, I got the back some more I do. And uh, when you're sawing like this, you want to keep a little light pressure. You just let the, let the saw fall down vertical. Don't try to steer down the line. Right now, I'm not even paying attention to the line. Just letting the saw fall down the gravity. you know, for something that's more important. So, you know, just a little light pressure, let the saw fall straight down. And again, I could just chisel this out quick, um, but I'm going to end up taking out that with a coping saw just for practice. Get you over here. Make sure you can see. Sorry, stuff all over the place. It's kind of a big project for what I, room I have. But again, I'm just going to let the... Just put the oh, make sure I'm up against my dog here. Put the saw and fall straight down. Is, is that in the beginning you don't trust it you're trying to steer this all over the place but after you do it enough times you'll find out that it will saw straight down that line you can just let it fall down the line don't try to steer it on there because uh, when I was putting the joint together I marked the inside of the keyway and I hadn't got it pushed all the way into the shoulder here so then when I adjusted it, I had to pick up another mark on there so that's why I had other marks on there and it doesn't matter on a coping saw whether it's a push or a pull I have one set up each way you should really kind of work with them both to get used to Working on the hardest thing for somebody with a coping saw is to get it to turn. So this is a good spot to practice. You have to get it going back and forth. Before you turn, it's a good lesson for cutting dovetails when you're trying to get in and get that relief and you can't see your saw turn sideways in your curve. This is overkill. I could just chip that out with a chisel real quick, but it's good practice. First one where I didn't cut all the way down. And another thing that we're going to talk about in a second here, chiseling out waste. And I was working from each side. So even something as simple as this. Yeah. When you're going through, even though it doesn't matter here because all this is going to be inside the joint and never be seen again, 
you know, you should always be practicing your technique. Make sure you don't push it out the other side. Come over, make sure you take the line off, even though I've marked it, in, you know, and a little bit of extra on all the pieces so that there's going to be a slight gap so it doesn't hold the joint up, you know, take, take it right down to the line. Sorry, I didn't cut that uh, top cut down far enough, so that's why I'm getting a little bit of chip out here. Never push it all the way through and blow the backside out. You should just always be, you know, practicing on it. Clean up your waist, make sure you don't have any hangers in there. It's just all joinery basics Let's take a look at it make sure you got a teeny little bit of line right here so I'm just going to take it off just so that when you're doing something that's really really tight and going to be seen that you don't end up having something hold up the joint it's nice and clean inside let me get you up where you can see better for a second here Also, the other thing in joinery is whenever you got stuff that's inside that's not going to be seen, that's going to come together, make sure that you cut relief. It's very important. Now, when you're cutting chamfers, you always want to cut your short sides across the grain first so that you can remove any tear out on the back side. Now, you could chamfer up the back side, but this has a good practice. Do your cross grain stuff first, and then when you do your down grain stuff, you'll cut off any tear out. So I'm just doing, now this is, like I said, it's a little bit of overkill because this hole is big enough so that nothing should hit it. It should be the exact diameter of the inside of the, the uh, mortise that it's going through. Because I marked it that way. But we're always going to be working on a technique. Someday this will save you. Just cut champers where you're not going to see them. Cut relief in joinery wherever you're not going to see it. So it doesn't hold you up later. And when I get done here, we'll put this thing together. Even right down to this bottom line, I'll, I'll go in and chamfer that off. Just Someday you'll be doing a joint that's going to lock together perfect, and you'll see it. Well, you don't have any clearance. Clearance is going to be zero, and doing the chamfers is going to save you when you go to put it together. What I always like to do on my tenons is, even though I fit these all yesterday, and I know it'll go together, just real quick, hit it with some sandpaper, it's just a tear off on one of my you know, big belts. Just keep them around the wave in the shot for sanding down pieces. I'm gonna hit this bottom edge, I could chamfer it, but it's gonna be inside the joint. Hit that real quick. Don't hit the outside because you're going to see the outside of it. This will actually just get you a few thousandths of an inch, which when you're doing joinery is huge. Let's make the joints go together, especially if you try to cut them tight like I did this one. And what I mean tight is it, it was knife marked exactly to the, the size, so there was no wiggle room so that this through tenon will be tight. So that's all that takes is just, just, plus it gives you a little bit of, I've been using a chisel on these joints to clean them up to fit it and they're kind of shiny and that'll give you a little bit of dust in there, makes it go to bed together easier. Uh, I'm gonna champ for the tenon just for a good look and another good practice so that I don't blow out the backside is to just, 
take a nick off the sides. I'm going to do my 45 across the grain first, just because it's good practice. I don't need to. You can work your way all the way around too, and then just do the straight edge and then the other straight edge, but. And these are more, just a little aesthetic chamfer. Makes it look purposeful. So that one's done. I'm gonna spin this around so you can see the other one. Hopefully this doesn't get too wide. I can get this done really quick here so it can go together. I used the push one this time just because I used the pull one last time. And again, I'm just trying to make sure it's tight. I'm just gonna try to, when you go to make the corner, just get yourself going first. I use the pull one most of the time. That's why we practice. This one doesn't seem to be There we go. One. Try to work really close to the line. People are real good at these little coping slash scroll saws. Really do amazing stuff. You know, have, um, you know, some amazing woodwork. You can cut patterns out and all that stuff, I'm not that good with it. I'm gonna move this clamp real quick. It's obviously this thing isn't sitting on my maple real well. Let's get it closer to here. I could probably do it without this, it just makes it easier for me. And I'll just take it out on the line over. the other side again just working on the basic principles of doing this so you get in the habits that aren't going to cause you a huge problem someday when you slap yourself in the head and you say I can't believe I did all that work and I just blew a big chunk out the other side which happens kind of like not having something clamped down real good work carefully down to the line. I could just stick it in the line and just hog this out. It doesn't, it's not going to make a difference, but you should work carefully. Watch your grain direction so that you don't, and you, know, you can see if all of a sudden the chisel's digging in and you're going in a weird grain direction that it's going to blow out the other side. Just pay attention. Now I know that I cut these deep so that I have plenty of room, but if you didn't know about the room and it was going to be real tight, you could go in here with your depth gauge or combination square and check the depth to make sure it's good. I know it is, so I'm not going to do that. It also helps if you get in a routine of how you do it. So what I find is that I had to do a bunch of these and you do them all the same way. And you don't, you'll find you don't miss steps. Whenever I do this, I push my chin. It's like cutting shoulders and stuff with the chisel. I'm pushing my chin. You always vary the amount that you take by raising and lowering the handle and not the angle of attack. So you just don't. Stick the chisel in and go with it. And you watch what's coming off the chisel and then you vary it by real small raising and lowering of the handle when you're doing it. Don't leave anything in here to get in the way. And see how it's cutting and then you just raise and lower the handle to vary the width of the chip. Even though this makes no difference, no one's ever going to see it, it's just good practice. Okay, it's 
Just a little get looks good. On those, I made sure I cut the line. Rather than inside the line, I made sure I cut the line, so I gave myself a teeny little bit of extra room. Chamfer the back side. So if we don't blow it out. Make sure it looks even. No sense in this point of a project and trying to do something too fast. And you don't want too much here. Just doing the end of a tenon like this. Just less and even's better. Put you over here for a second while I get this up and take a look at it, make sure everything's kind of copacetic, and I think we'll try to put this thing together. Don't let this back off for a minute. Okay, just gonna find the outside of the joint. It's gonna be facing out. Quick, I'm going to take a look at my shoulders, make sure they're all clean. Put you up where you can see better. Probably see better like this. I might get out of frame for a second, but I'll put you back in a second. Just make sure my shoulders are clean. Careful moving the wood around when it's soft wood like this. You put things in it. If you're using a lot of clamp pressure, this doesn't make a whole lot of sense because you'd be, even if there's little stuff in the way, you'd be clamping it into place. So, come back here for a second, see what you're looking at. out of frame so much and trying not to. So yeah, when I grow up I'll have a tripod. Alright, so which is the up? This is out. I'm gonna take a look at the uh, top and see if I need any work on the top. As far as finishing goes, I got one little dent down here from the hole fast. The grain's going the right direction. Just take that off real quick. It's set up for a finish work right now, so it's just smoothing. It's still feel like that. just a hair and smooth it out.
it and get this end into the grain. This plane set really tight for finishing, so I shouldn't get any tear out. As you can see from these shavings, I don't know if you can see this good. That's really wrinkled because I got the cap iron set so tight. Let's see what you're looking at. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'm just gonna finish out this end. It's got a little black mark on it from the plane when I broke these beams down. There's a big knot right here too. You can probably see it coming through. Perfect. All right. So, I'm looking at it now. So that top has all been basically finished, just so I don't have to mess with it again. Doesn't need to be sanded or anything. And I'm gonna try to put this thing together. So let's see where I'm gonna put you guys. I'll put you guys up here for a sec. And let me take this down. So I'll get you guys pointing in this direction here. Right there by the corner. So I'm going to start over there. So I got uh, components and numbered. One, two, three, four. Uh, also, the outside front corner, facing corner, is marked and a little arrow. And this is going to be four and three. So those arrows are going to be facing out. If you take something from me, trust me in the fact that it makes a difference the way you do it. When you, especially when you fit them, when you fit them joints, it's easy to get crossed up in something like this. This way, let's do one and two. I also keep odd numbers on the same side. So one and three are on the same side. Two and four are on the same side. Arrows facing out. Corresponding marks on the top of the thing. You're in a weird angle here. Let me see what that looks like. Okay. Corresponding marks on these. Outside corner, arrow. Arrow. If this still doesn't go together, I'm going to have egg on my face because this is the first time that it's been together.
take you over to look at it in a second and see how you can see from here. Okay, that's okay. I'm gonna do this side, which is three and one. That's four, so it's this one. This one locks over the top. Three and one goes this way. These tenons were all fit individually, so it does make a difference which way they go. Does go together. They kind of got to be square to each other too. If I did my work right, it'll fit right down over the lock. You got to be careful not to break off that little bottom piece. We found that out, and you got to be careful. I'll show you in a minute about getting the grain direction right on these, where you can break off the end of the tenon. you see these, see it from there. This one just happens to be the right way out of the grace of God. Don't push it in on even to break those ends off. So this is what the joint looks like from the top. There's going to be a granite tabletop on top of this. I'll show you what the joint looks like from the outside. So, without any clamps or glue or anything, that one can obviously be pushed down a little bit, but the joint looks like that. And it shows through. I'll get view from the other side. Actually, I'm going to walk on top of it just to show you how soft it is. Oh. So I'm standing on it right now. No glue, no screws, no nothing. This is getting me 28 minutes. Walking down the stretcher. So, yeah. It's not clamped, nothing. See my little chamfers. So this would actually be okay just the way it is. It would be done in uh, most cases other than maybe I haven't um, done any finished sand planing or anything on the ledge yet. I'll take a look at if any of them are flush or proud, like this one's kind of just a, the smallest bit proud right here. So I will face this side a little bit. And the same thing here. So just to clean them up, but I want to just do a Test fit takes up the whole shop as you can see. This would be fine for anything. Like I said, I just you can see my footprints on it, maybe. I just walked down that stretcher with my weight, which I'm like 185 pounds. So I just walked down that with my weight. Nothing holding it in the middle. There's nothing. You know, holding this together, you can't, you can't wiggle it. It's crazy solid. Um, but this is going to get crosses. Let's see back here. So there's going to be, let's see if you can see those smaller boards I milled down there. This was all milled out of the customer's lumber. There'll be crosses going this way and then a stretcher going with a through tenon that's wedged on the end. So there'll be a cross here, same thing down there. And then there's a big granite tabletop going on top of it. So that's it. You got to see it. Hopefully those of you that hung on to the end, that's going to be the stretcher that goes the full length with the through tenons. And those are all the components to make the crosses right there. And that's an extra one in case I screwed one up. So that's it. From uh, tree to table base. Hope you're having a great day.